Hey guys, what's up? I'm Mark and in this channel, I talk about lifestyle, personal finance, and investments. If you're not new to this channel, you would know that I tend to be a little conservative when it comes to my investments. Now, I don't do this a lot, but in this video, we're going to be talking about an upcoming IPO. I've only talked about IPOs that I was really excited about, and I've also shared with you those IPOs that I've chosen to pass on. With this coming IPO, you would know that I'm probably excited or at least a little bit intrigued of what it has to offer. So here are 5 quick facts about the upcoming Citicor REIT IPO. Let's go! Number 1. Now out of the handful of REIT IPOs that we've had in the last 2 years, the Citicor REIT will be the first REIT that is not involved in office space leasing or commercial leasing. So this would be the first time that a REIT is getting into a leasing business that would be completely dependent on a business that's in the renewable energy sector. So is this a good or bad thing? I shared with you previously that my hesitation with the previous REITs would be that they are completely dependent on office space leasing and with the pandemic in full steam. I was sort of questioning that, but those REITs have actually managed, well so far so good. While on this end, the Citicor REIT will actually be simply focused on renewable energy and its primary tenant will essentially be itself, its sister company spearheading the operations of its solar power plants. So in some ways, yes, this is a good thing because Citicor REIT never really has to look for other tenants unlike office REITs. But at the same time, we're really putting our eggs into the Citicor group of companies, not only in terms of the lease revenue, but also in terms of the energy production revenue. And this leads me to number two. Unlike its predecessors, which are based on a fixed lease agreement, the Citicor REIT actually has a provision for profit sharing for variable rental income. So on top of its fixed lease agreement, there's actually a provision there for additional income coming from the renewable energy business. So this would be like the equivalent of Megaworld earning from its BPO operators in terms of their BPO revenues. The projected variable income would actually be quite small relative to the lease income, but at least it's there and that we as prospective investors could be earning a little bit from the operations of the renewable energy business. So number three, and perhaps this is the most exciting, Citicor REIT is already in operations and is already revenue generating. Now isn't this a given? Aren't all REITs and IPOs supposed to be revenue generating anyway? Well, I thought that was the case. But with Solar Philippines IPO in December last year, I found out that you could actually do an IPO without actually having to produce revenue before your IPO. Now I've shared this in a previous video and this was actually a special exception. And to be honest, I was hesitant with that SPNEC IPO last year. So it took me by a big surprise. SPNEC was actually the best performing IPO last year. Currently it's trading 37% above its IPO price. So what I'm seeing here is the public is actually quite receptive to the renewable energy sector. And if the SPNEC IPO last year would be telling of the Citicor REIT IPO and other renewable energy IPOs coming up, I think this would be a good sign. And just to give you a quick breakdown of Citicor REIT's operations, they're operating five plants right now, one in Clark, two in Tarlac, one in Toledo, and one in Silay City. Collectively, these plants have a capacity of over 160 megawatts. Based on the last five years, the audited financial statement reflects that in 2017, there was a loss of 13 million, but this quickly recovered. By 2018, it had a net income of 3 million, and by 2020, net income was beyond 100 million, and even for the nine months operations for 2021, they already had 118 million as its net income. So looking at the company's financials in terms of its net income and EBITDA, I'm seeing Citicor's financials as something encouraging for me to invest in. Moving on to our fourth fact for today, I'm particularly interested that the people behind Citicor are actually behind the Megawide Construction Group. Now, if you don't know Megawide, they are probably one of the largest, if not the largest, construction company in the Philippines. Their most popular works include City of Dreams Manila, which was done in partnership with Bell Corporation, and the new Cebu Mactan International Airport, I see Megawide as really a very strategic company that have proven themselves to be able to work with not only companies from the private sector, but also in the public sector. So lastly, number 5. The IPO price of the Citicor REIT will be at 2 pesos and 55 centavos. Now this was slashed 
from an original price target of over 3 pesos and 15 centavos. But with this price slash, Megawide actually didn't adjust the target dividends that they are looking to do. So the dividend yield is now at 7%. So from my recollection, this would be the highest dividend yield when comparing to all the previous REIT IPOs. So yes, Citicor is doing this to be raising funds to be putting up additional power plants in Bulacan and South Cotabato. So those are your 5 quick facts about the upcoming Citicor REIT IPO. Again, I'm not a financial expert. These are just my own personal observations. As for myself, I'm going to be investing in this IPO. I'm not really sure if it will pan out. Let's see if I'm correct or not. If you've liked this video, please don't forget to like, comment, and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Thanks again for watching guys and happy investing!